Hello, and welcome to Catholicism in the Car. My name is Parker Zerbo. Hello, hope everybody is well. Um, today I want to continue our discussion on the sacraments and, and the spiritual life. And I would like to discuss the sacrament of ordination, of holy orders. Now, this is quite fitting because I, I just attended the ordination mass and also the first mass of a very good friend of mine, uh, Father now Father Lee Allen Fortin. Uh, so I want to make a shout out to him uh, and to the other two priests that were ordained. Uh, it was uh, now Father Mark Hellinger and now Father Brian Eisenberger. So congratulations to the three of them. Uh, but I want to give my particular congratulations to, to Father Lee Allen. Uh, he was a Franciscan with me when we were in the religious life, uh, and he has been a very, very dear friend of mine. So it was a, it was a beautiful blessing being able to watch and participate in uh, the, the Mass of Ordination and the rite of ordination within it. So how does the rite of, or the, the sacrament of ordination affect our spiritual lives, and and not just the spiritual lives of priests. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit as well. But how it affects everyone's spiritual life, clergy and laity alike. So first off, what is the sacrament of ordination? Well, it is where uh, grace is given, a, a very specific grace, an indelible mark upon the soul is given to a man, uh, because because only men can receive the sacrament of holy orders, because it uh, it it makes one like Christ in a very particular sense. A priest and, and also a deacon, uh, and, and most especially bishops, image Christ, but not just in a symbolic way, because we do all image Christ by our baptism, but they image Christ in a sacramental and liturgical way, which is very particular. And as we've talked about in the past, sacraments are both spiritual and corporeal, or... Uh, Corporeal meaning like body or having matter. So they're spiritual and material uh, actions that are done and that convey God's grace. And you need both the spiritual or you could also say intellectual part of the sacrament. Uh, philosophically, you would say the form of the sacrament. And you need the matter of the sacrament. And in ordination, the matter of the sacrament is, is the bishop. His, his hands, uh, and also I, I think I think that the the chrism is also a necessary element for the sacrament of ordination. But then again, it, it may also play. I might be wrong on this, and it may play the same function as chrism during baptism, uh, at least in the in the Western rites of the Catholic Church, where uh, it does not that chrism does not confer another sacrament. Uh, of itself, whereas in the Eastern churches they practice confirmation at baptism, so then the the chrism would would uh, convey that sacrament. So, so it's the laying on of hands of the bishop. That's that's what I at least know. <laughs> and chrism is a maybe there. And what happens is there is an indelible mark, which means an, an un um, it can it cannot be washed away. It's a mark that cannot be washed away or ever gotten rid of upon the person's soul. So truly, once someone is ordained a member of the clergy, whether deacon, priest, or bishop, they are, for all of eternity, a deacon, priest, or bishop. So how does this sacrament relate to our spiritual lives? Well, I guess first let's, let's say how does it relate to the, the priests or the clergyman's spiritual life, okay? Um, it relates to their spiritual life very acutely, because of that transformation, that indelible mark upon their soul that is made upon the conference of the sacrament. So they are uh, made sacramental images of Christ. Not symbolic images, and they're also not like physical copies of Christ, but a sacramental image of Christ. So during, uh, particularly during the liturgy, uh, the church teaches that the priest stands in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. So it's a sacramental imaging of Christ through the priest. In a similar way to how the Eucharist is a, it's a true and real sacramental present. 
presence, which is distinct from a true and real physical bodily presence in the fullest sense. Um, like, it's, it's not exactly the same. The Eucharist is not exactly the same as the resurrected body of Christ standing there right in front of you in, in space-time. <laughs> Um, but it is a true and physical sacramental presence. Okay, so in the same way, a priest is truly uh, sacramentally Christ on the altar, okay, and, and an image of Christ. But he is not Christ. Okay, he is not Christ. So there's a distinction there. So this this sacrament, you know, quite obviously, I think, affects the life of of a priest or of a clergyman who gets ordained, and it affects the laity, because without the clergy, sacraments cannot be conveyed to them, to the laity. The only sacrament that can be conveyed by a layperson to another layperson is the sacrament of baptism. And in uh, canon law, at least, and I think like just because of fittingness and, and because of the way that, that God set things up, it is most fitting for a clergyman to to do to be the the presider over baptism, um, but it but it's not uh, absolutely necessary, which which shows the importance of baptism as the big quote unquote gateway sacrament, uh, because baptism uh, without baptism, as far as we know, one cannot be saved, uh, and I mean baptism of water, baptism of blood, and baptism of fire, right? So. As far as we know, no one can be saved without baptism. God is not bound by the sacraments, so he could if he wanted to, but he would do that for sure. So that's why baptism is so incredibly important. Um, and it's also the gateway sacrament to the rest of the sacrament. So, um, yeah, the sacrament of ordination. There's a lot I could say here. I, I would I would like to go into each, into the diaconate, the priesthood, and uh, the bishopric, the episcopal ordination, uh, more particularly. Uh, but I don't think... I, Equipped at this point to do that. I don't think I know enough about each sacrament. Like I can give you a basic overview, but you can't go super in depth. So um, yeah, I hope I hope this helps. And and truly, truly, without the clergy, without the sacraments, uh, none of the other sacraments except for baptism could be given to us. And I think I think that needs to sink in for a lot of people, especially during this vocations crisis. That we need young men to give a portion of their life to active discernment of priesthood. And also young women as well, of course. But but it's, it's it's a bit more of a problem amongst young men right now because young men are not as inclined to take action as women are in on spiritual matters. This is why it's so important, I think, to have a revival of uh, of only having men men and boys in the, uh, the liturgy for the sake of vocations because because women you know kind of are naturally disposed towards spiritual realities. Guys are not, and we need to in any way foster that so that they can so that vocations can be fostered. So hope that helps. Maybe I'll speak a little bit more on this later and we can continue on. Alright, thank you. Oh, uh, real quick, real quick, please feel free to uh, subscribe to any of my podcasts on any of the podcast players. Find me on YouTube. Please subscribe. Like me on Facebook, like the Catholicism Car channel on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're all there. Catholicism Car. Find me. And then I also have a Patreon account if you wish to support what I do at, at this podcast and this YouTube channel. And you can also support us on anchor.fm. There's a support button there you click on. I also have links to all of this on my website's support page at www.catholicisminthecar.com.